Welcome to SPD TV's news on Monday, September the 7th, 2020. I am Bob Nova with details. Hundreds of children from across the country returned to school today after being at home for almost five months due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The reopening of schools was done under the new protocol set out by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. As we hear in this report by Larissa Pugs the Kid, several schools reported minor hiccups at the start of the first day. Washing hands, testing of temperatures and wearing of masks by students and teachers were evident today as schools in the Kingstown area reopened for the first time in five months. Schools opened their gates from as early as 7.30 a.m. However, after the school bell rang at 8.30, some students were still not inside as there was a buildup of both parents and students. Sorry. The only problem I actually had, it was the um, traffic. Fine, it is good and I'm happy about it. Schools and homes were made primary bubbles, hence it is considered safe to take off masks in the classroom once a student registers normal temperature. We spoke with some students who said they understand that the protocols are necessary, noting that they missed the face-to-face -face teaching. The issue is just for safety. It is very warm and welcoming because I have to come back to school to learn something, but at the same time, I'm worrying about my safety. Well, I'm happy that they put in protocol to make we be safe because preventer, prevention is better than kill. I didn't want to come back to school. It was a Why? Because I wasn't too sure if there would be um, like social distancing and that stuff. And, like, I ain't accustomed to those kind of stuff. Yeah. It will take me a while to adjust, but yeah, you have to get used to it. Some principals reported that no student tested an above normal temperature today and that there was a smooth process with teachers assisting with temperature checks and after a certain period, security guards stepped in. At the intermediate high school, the only challenge was with late comers. Quite a few of our students came in late. But, like I said before, we were all ready. We had our thermometers in place, our hand soap, our sanitizers. Teachers were outside handing masks to those students who weren't wearing any before coming onto the compound. All schools reported having a sick bay, which was another requirement of the Ministry of Health and Education. At the Stony Ground Government School, a section of the school was used to accommodate the grades 4 to 6 students as construction was still in progress. Grades 1 to 3 are being housed at another building close by. Acting Deputy Principal of the school, Sonia Selwyn, anticipates that in a few weeks' time the work will be finished and students will be in one building. No, they're not quite finished. There are a few things, minor things to be completed before. So we should be back in October at, at least right the end of September October early October the Bookman Bay Secondary School was the only school not to reopen today due to cleaning being done the school is expected to reopen on Wednesday September 9th 2020 the SVGTU had said that there were major works to be done at the school in order for it to comply with the protocol set out to ensure health and safety of students and teachers for SBGTV News, Larissa Pogsley Kid. Thanks, Larissa. Pres Principal of the Gome Methodist School, Sheridan Edwards, said that they are very excited about the new school year and all the requirements from the Ministry of Education. Edwards said the procedure and the guidelines put in place for the reopening of schools was much easier than they thought, and the school will do everything to ensure that the children follow the protocols and are kept safe. I am, I am really happy that school has reopened for the children. I've been home for five months. Um, I know we look forward to the continuity of their education. And with COVID, we have to learn to cope. So we are, we are following as a school the Ministry of Education guidelines and we have come, come up with our own using their, their guidelines as the model. We are doing everything in our power. We have, we have everything in place. 
the wash station, the hand sanitizer, we have sanitized the, um, the compound, the school inside and outside. So we are hoping, we are looking for a great year. And the children are excited, we are excited as a staff. We are all, all we have started already with the temperature checks, the teachers are doing it, and we are looking for a great year. The students of the school are also excited to be back in the classroom, but they complain of being uncomfortable wearing a mask to school. I was happy to come back to school with my friends and I love it. We are full wearing masks and touching the COVID-19, right? So, full washing hands, try to avoid and touching the nose, the mouth, and the hands. Wash your hands, dry your hands, hold hands, dry your hands, and so on. Okay. So, how do you feel wearing mask at school? Good. I'm so happy to come back to school as I can and come get away from home. I'm glad. Real time. At school, I want more to school because it's stifling. So far, I'm going up on Facebook. I'm going up on Facebook and use TV. And as part of measures to protect the nation's children while at school, the traffic branch of the RSPG Police Force has placed several safety signs at various school compounds in the Kingston area. These signs are placed at the CW Prescott Primary, the Kingston Preparatory and the Roman Catholic Primary School, and the Girls High School. Speaking from the CW Prescott Primary School, Sergeant Kenny Jones of the traffic branch of the RSPG Police Force explained more about the signs and their importance. Right, um, we are the traffic department, the head of the traffic department in conjunction with the Ministry of Health, right, would have created, I want to create a safe zone within the schools for the safety of the children, teachers and the general public who will be using the school compounds and the, um, the vicinity of the school while, while we are approaching the opening of school. So we're going to find it fit to place a police no parking sign in the school compound to ensure that there's a free flow of traffic in to and out of the school so that there should be less congestion in the compound of the school because of this sign. So what we're doing, we are urging motorists or persons who will be using the compound to adhere to the police sign, no, par no parking, right? Sergeant Jones gave the assurance that the police will do its part to ensure that the nation's children will be able to cross the road safely while ensuring a smooth flow of traffic. Um, police will be placed outside of the school gate where there's a pedestrian crossing to ensure that there's a smooth flow of traffic as usual into and out of the school. We're not telling persons that they cannot enter the school compound to drop off their children, but we would like to ask them also to use the main road, the area in front of the curriculum building on Richmond Public Road. You could use that area as a drop-off point if they're coming from King's um, downtown and if they're coming from the windward side, they could use the area next to stoplight at French's Gate also as a drop-off point to let off those children. The children will be safely crossed because their officer with enough experience that will be placed at these crossings to ensure that these children cross the road safely and get to the, um, the school compound. Sergeant Jones and Station, San Station Sergeant Parnham Brown said it is of equal importance for teachers and parents to pay attention to and obey the signs which are useful in the event of an emergency. Place these signs there as a form of guidelines for the teachers and also for the parents or guardians who will have the opportunity of using or being in that area to use the, the, um, the road. And we are hoping that the persons who will be using the road and to dropping off to be dropping off their children or the who are actually going to teach at the school that, uh, that they adhere to these guidelines and ensure that our children are safe while learning is taking place. Yes, it will also assist a great deal in terms of getting the fire truck or the ambulance in in the event that there's something serious or major 
major event at the school where there might be some fire or some sick student or teacher, it will assist a great deal in terms of having enough clearance for, for the fire appliance and the ambulance to get in and out of the school without any um, interference from vehicles that might be parked there. With the closure of the Pelican School in Kanoan, this morning parents took their children to the Kanoan Government School to make the necessary arrangements for their transfer. The parents protested last week, stating that they were not informed of the Pelican School being closed by government, stating that they have already purchased uniforms for their children to return to school for the new academic year. The Ministry of Education has since granted permission for the students to wear their uniforms to the Kanawan Government School until the end of Term 1. Speaking on the issue at a press conference on Friday, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said the uniforms were, the authority, sorry, were informed that starting this new academic school year, the students of Pelican will be schooled at the Kanawan government, and that he has since written to the principal investor in Kanawan as a reminder of what he was agreed to two years ago. The school campus is for public education. And under that, there are three sub-points. A, it will have primary and secondary schools for a total of 400 students. B, it will have IT lab, science lab, a library and auditorium. C. There will be no private schools. You hear that? That's in point one. Two. The Montessori preschool will be open to all kids without a charge. Three. The Pelican students will the Pelican School students will be allowed to complete the academic year in the new school campus to avoid disruption to their curriculum and then they will be absorbed in the public school. PM Gonzalez said the investor built the school on government lands and permission was granted based on certain grounds. Told you and Miss Child repeatedly that the private school, the Pelican, will not be permitted to operate within the school compound of the state. It is not permissible by law and policy. Accordingly, no visas will be issued for teachers to teach at that school so long as it operates as a private school within the bowels of the state school. Then I pose this question. Do you know that it offers its own curriculum outside that of the public school? I went on. The government has allowed your company to build and operate on state lands, a Montessori preschool away from the school compound of the state primary and secondary schools. And you can go and see it. It's there. It's a good school. The recently established molecular lab in SVG will soon have an automated extraction machine, which will boost the workload of the existing PCR machine currently used to test for COVID-19. Chief Laboratory Technologist Elliot Samuel said that the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, has indicated that they may not be able to support their third-level PCR testing for SVG due to a strain on its resources, and the automated equipment will come in handy in country and sent to CAFA for some level of confirmation. But what they are going to be doing going forward is still giving us confirmation on all of our positives and 10% of the negatives. So we are still going to be, in some form or fashion, get some quality control support from our Caribbean epidemiology. Well, currently, we are doing a good job. I think we are turning out about 300 samples a day with the current staffing levels that we have. And with an automated with an automated instrument to our extraction, we should be able to double and triple that output. The government spent more than one million EC dollars to further equip the molecular lab, which came on stream in April. Samuel said with the additional resources available, laboratory services will be expanded to the Grenadines at the seaports. We have all intent, and I know plans are underway, to put laboratory services in some of the Grenadines Island. We are going to start with Canon. Um, we're going to be putting a containerized lab in Canon, and we are also going to be looking at putting, placing one of these containerized, containerized labs at the cruise ship boat as a lab for the 
point of entry screening for the cruise ship passengers. The chief laboratory technologist noted that SVG is ready to handle any demand for COVID-19 testing with over 32,000 rapid test kits and 35,000 PCR test kits. As it regards to lab staff, Samuel said they have in place adequately trained staff available. We have also, through diplomatic relations, obtained the services of three Cubans who are also trained in molecular methods. So currently we have seven persons working at the molecular laboratory, which allows us to offer a 24-hour service in terms of PCR testing um, to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The obstacles Obstetrics and Gynecology Department at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital recently received a donation of a brand new cardiography CTG fetal heartbeat monitor and several other pieces of equipment and care packages. According to the head of the Obstetrics and Gynecology Department, Dr. Sheridan Slater, Ron Kilius, a Canadian businessman and friend of the late surgeon and former Governor General, Sir Frederick Ballantyne, donated the CTG in his honor. Additionally, Agents of Change Organization Inc., a faith-based NGO in Canada, donated several pieces of equipment and care packages. The handover took place at the maternity ward, a Matt A, in the presence of Dr. Sheridan Slater, Sir Frederick's daughter, Lauren McIntosh, and Deputy Hospital Administrator, Andrew Williams, among others. In accepting the donation, the Deputy Hospital Administrator commended that on the, commented on the fact that the hospital is still receiving gifts even in the pandemic season. He thanked the donors, adding that the equipment and care packages will go a long way to provide care for the patients at the hospital. The work being done by the state is not simply because it's an election year. So says Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez as he responded to criticisms leveled against the timing in which some of the work being done nationwide. His comments came on WFM's News on Issues program yesterday. PM Gonzalez said much work has been done to either create new or improve existing infrastructure in all sectors, including education, health, tourism, and national security. Highlighting some of the criticism leveled against his administration, PM Gonzalez said the government has been working since day one. Some big projects like the, the, the bridge which is being dealt with, the main bridge in Chateaubelair, you know, by Sharps there now, where the playing field, the old playing field is. Just, just, just um, right near to where my brother Superdan is, you know. I, I mean, and, and it's amazing. Of course, while we are doing these things, people are saying, well, why are you doing things now? We have been doing things all the time. But because election is coming up, there's, a, there's this absurd thesis that um, I must only work four years, that in the fifth year, in order to be fair to the opposition, I must do nothing. One of the programs which has come under scrutiny is the Life Slave program. Pian Gonzalez said that the program has been quite beneficial, especially to fire victims. Like for instance, we give out materials every single year. We give out four and a half million dollars this year. Last year we gave out, but last year we concentrated a lot on um, the, the homes for the, the, the lives to live. We're doing some lives to live um, and we, we've kept back some materials and we have materials also to deal with some for fire victims. All these, all these things, if somebody had a fire and the house got burnt down, one of the important things you have to make sure that you get a statement from the police that you're not responsible for the arson in the sense of, of course, an electrical fire, um, uh, some candle burned on the house, <laughs> um, the, the gas had a leak, but we, 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 need, we need an official report as to what, what, how the fire was caused, you know? We need a, and we needed approval from the police too, that is, everything is okay. So is a multitude of work. Stories can change lives. An author of the book, Can You Keep a Secret, Juanita Maud Headley, is continuing to share her life story to give persons the tools to detect and protect against child sexual abuse.
Henley, who has visited over 30 countries, has used many platforms, including the RSVG Police Force Care Serve Protect program, to highlight the issue of child sexual abuse. She says her work has begun to bear fruit. I would say thus far, the blessing of the work I've done is that people communicate to me. They're open and transparent. One of the greatest successes is that I have aligned myself with a therapist who is willing to provide counseling and support to those who need it. I've even been able to refer two individuals onto her as a result of the messages I've been sharing. For me, I feel it's important to collaborate. Even if coming to a new country, it doesn't mean to say that my message is just for me to speak and not to continue on. I believe every one of us has a responsibility to hold on that baton so that even when I leave the country, the message will still continue. Every one of us has a story. The Bible says we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Stories change lives. When somebody can hear what I may have been through as a victim of childhood sexual abuse from 4 to 10 from my mother's first husband, when they can hear that I did not become promiscuous, a prostitute, or transgender, but I've turned my life around and become a New York attorney, they can be inspired that the past does not have to dictate the future. Headley said her talk and engagements are not lectures, but encourages fruitful conversation. And that is her hope to spread her message to many Vincentians to end the scourge of child sexual abuse. It is not a lecture, it is as conversational as my audience make it. I love what I do and my desire is to use simplistic terms to bring the reality of abuse and exploitation right to you so you can understand and protect and stop it from coming to your doorstep. What we have to understand, abuse and exploitation is often hidden in plain sight and we have a responsibility to protect the children around us. The Bible is very clear. People perish for lack of knowledge. Without knowledge, how can you protect the people around you? And any one of us can be vulnerable. I am here, Lord willing, until the 10th of September. Some other programs are being scheduled. However, my desire is to stay a lot longer. My work here is not done. I currently quit my job whilst I was in the UK, so the door is open for me to spend a lot more time to spread this message. I pray that I'll have that opportunity to stay so that I can use more time to impact the people in this nation. Helly said she is available if any person or organization wishes for her to speak and share her story.